very important. You can hear words that encourage you. You can listen, hear words that discourage you. You're going to hear all kinds of voices from your friends, from your family members, from your loved ones. But because of things, because of things that you have heard in your life or learned, we all have strongholds in our minds. We all have strongholds. What does that mean? We all have these ideas in our head that are keeping us from being all that God wants us to be. We are believing these lies in our head that are keeping us from being all that God created us to be. And that's what I'm going to hopefully share with you from God's Word this morning. I want to show you, I want to encourage you to demolish spiritual strongholds in your life. Demolish spiritual strongholds in your life. There are things that we have allowed to get a hold of our lives and we have allowed to control us and it, it's making us into somebody that God does not want us to be. Whether we're afraid of certain things, whether we're overly preoccupied of what people are thinking about us, whether we're uh, trying to live life in such a way to impress someone, whatever it is, we all have strongholds in our mind, and it has made us into somebody that God does not want us to be. So I'm going to hopefully encourage you to break these strongholds, to demolish these strongholds, okay, in our mind. These are things that we have lied to us ourselves about, or we have allowed to let others tell us these lies, and we have believed these lies. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 6 says this. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. Though we walk with flesh and bones, right? You have flesh and bones? Yes, you do. Do you? You sure do. And so do you. We all have flesh and bones, right? Okay? For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments. And every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. In other words, any lies that people have told us, we want to hold those thoughts captive and get them out of our thinking. Because we're believing lies, right? About God, about ourselves. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. In other words, any thought that you know is dishonoring to God, you want to punish it. By punish it, I mean it means you get rid of it. You destroy it. You want to hear, you've heard this song before, the voice of truth, right? God's voice that you hear in His Word. Did you know that back in the 1500s, the Word of God, the Bible, was referred to as the voice of God? Why do you think that is? Why do you think the Bible was referred to in the Latin language, Vox Dei, which means the voice of God? Why do you think the Bible was nicknamed the voice of God? Anybody? Middle school and high school or Christy, you should know. Why do you think the Bible was referred to as the voice of God? Hannah. So then, like, God could speak, like, I can't hear him, but I speak in the book. Exactly. God speaks to us through his words in the Bible. It's the voice of God speaking to us. Okay? So what's not, we, there's three strongholds, three thoughts. Three ideas that we allow to come into our thinking and affect who we are, and that's not who God wants us to be, okay? The first stronghold is the stronghold of self-righteousness. And as you see in the picture, we want to break it. We want to get rid of this attitude. 
This attitude of self-righteousness. What is this attitude of self-righteousness? This is the attitude that says, I'm better than others. And you think you're better than others, so you walk around criticizing others all the time. And you have this attitude that you think you're better than everybody else, and that's how you walk around, and you live life criticizing and pointing the mistakes of others and not looking at yourself. As a matter of fact, what people do who are self-righteous, they put others down to, be, to feel better about themselves. You've met people like that. If you ever meet people at school or in your neighborhood, they're always putting you down. Pray for them. Feel sorry for them. Because a lot of times people do that. People who love putting others down are doing it because, why? Because they want to feel better about themselves. So by putting others down, they think they're all good and all better and, than, than those that they're putting down. All right? So pray for those people. But if that's you, remember, guys, you are who you are by the grace of God. It has nothing to do with being better than anybody else. If you're a follower of Christ, the only reason why you're a believer in Christ is because God gave you a gift and you received it. It has nothing to do about with you being better than anybody else. You with me? Okay. So if you believe in Christ, it's out of the love of God who has given you the ability to believe in Him. So let's destroy this attitude of self-righteousness and look at others as fellow, number one, humans created by God who need Jesus as much as you and I do. We all need Christ the same. We're all sinners, and the only way we can be forgiven is by coming to faith in Jesus Christ. All right? Look at this verse. It says, he also told this parable. I, I love this parable because, <laughs> unfortunately, we see a lot of this in churches sometimes. Among those who are supposed to be an example of what it means to live out the Word of God. Listen to this. He also told this parable to some who trusted in who? In themselves. Instead of who? Yeah. God. That they were righteous. And they treated others with contempt. I'm righteous. You're not. Two men, so Jesus tells a story to his disciples to show them about self-righteousness and how bad and nasty that is. Okay? Two men went up into the temple to pray. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, okay, let me point. The, you know who the Pharisees were? The, there were men that studied the Old Testament very strictly and made sure that they obeyed every man-made law. Because these weren't laws from God's word. They made up these laws that they said everyone should follow if they really want to be close to God. And since they went around showing off how they followed these laws, they went around feeling better than everybody else. These were the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. So they're supposed to be the holy people. You know who the tax collectors were? The tax collectors were hated by everybody. The tax collector guys were Jews, okay? Because we're uh, Jesus is talking to a Jewish crowd in Israel, all right? that betrayed their people and went to work to the, with the Roman government to collect taxes from their own people. But not only that, you know what they would do? If the government would tell uh, these tax collectors, go collect $10 from Christopher Del Pino, then the tax collector would collect 25 and keep 15 and give 10 to the Roman government. So they were what? Thieves and robbers and liars and traitors. Do you think they were liked, the tax collectors? No, I think not I don't think so. So let's see what happens here though, right? Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself Prayed like this, praying thus. There was supposed to be a space there. 
God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Thank you, God. I'm so good. That's what the Pharisee was pretty much saying. Okay? I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. That's like saying I go to church all the time and give money to the church. I'm a good person.